Hello and welcome back to CEO.ca's Inside the Boardroom. My name is James Fenton and today I'm joined by Ernest Mast, President and CEO of Dore Copper. Ernest, it's great to see you today. Good to be here, James. So if we could kick things off with a quick overview of Dore, uh, can you give us a summary of your projects? And I know you're pursuing an interesting kind of hub and spoke uh, strategy. Maybe if you could give us a bit of context behind that as well. Yes, our hub and spoke strategy is centered around the town of Shibugumu, Quebec. These are a number of past producing copper assets with an existing mill and tailings facility, whereby we would feed approximately 2,500 tons per day uh, of mined ore, uh, then sorted through a milling complex, and we would make a copper gold concentrate. Okay. Very interesting. And, and the infrastructure around uh, this mining camp, you mentioned there's a, a mill already there. What, what other kind of infrastructure in terms of uh, your roads and power is, is in place there? So our assets actually were part of uh, some previous companies that operated for numerous years. And so we inherited a lot of infrastructure, and that infrastructure includes mining assets. We have a number of deposits with existing uh, shafts and hoists and ramps uh, already accessing the underground ore. Then we have road access to all of our sites, and then we have electricity access. We're connected to the Hydro Quebec grid uh, at a number of our sites as well. And so uh, we also have a community of 7,500 people, or there is a community of 7,500 people close to our mine site, so we would have a commuter operation. So really what sets us apart from most other projects is that this is a project which uh, very low capital intensity, a lot of the infrastructure is in place, there's a community uh, adjacent to the project that grew up with mining uh, that is very favorable uh, with respect yeah. to mining. Yeah, interesting. I guess uh, that must keep uh, your know, cost very low as well, having that infrastructure already in place. Um, can you give us a quick uh, overview of the work that you've done so far in 2024? Uh, I know you've expanded uh, claims of the Joe Mann property. Uh, you've also been doing some ongoing environmental and metallurgy work. Uh, can you give us a, a quick rundown of, of the year to date? Yes, for sure. So on the exploration side, uh, we've done some drilling programs at Devlin and at Cedar Bay. Uh, in both of those programs, we, we identified uh, areas for future mineral exploration. In addition, on the metallurgical test work, uh, late last year we completed a metallurgical program where we established very high recoveries and excellent concentrate grade from the Corner Bay deposit. And now we've taken the samples from those tests and we're doing long-term environmental tests on reject material from an ore sorter and also the tailings uh, to better characterize the materials coming from the processes. And that's uh, an essential part of getting your mine permits. Uh, and we're currently in the permitting process in Quebec. On the acquisition side, uh, we actually acquired over 3,100 hectares of land adjacent to our Joe Mann property. Mm -hmm. And we own 65% of that acquired property. The government of Quebec is the 35% owner. Okay. And there's a number of deposits uh, that have been identified and showings that have been identified on that land package. And those deposits uh, are very high grade gold with a little bit of copper. And okay. the most important one is called Norhart, which is a kilometer north of the Joe Man mine. And Norhart has three veins that are identified with a number of intercepts over 10, 20 grams per ton. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're currently formulating plans of what would be the right move to do there in terms of looking at expanding resources. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for that overview. Uh, I want to talk on some news that you've just put out uh, you know, acquisition of claims continuous to the Corner Bay uh, property. Can you walk us through the, you know, kind of work that's gone into, you know, bringing that deal to fruition uh, and then maybe, you know, why you've acquired these claims and what you plan to do with them? So these claims, uh, as you talked, as you mentioned, are adjacent to Corner Bay. They're immediately to the east and to the north of the Corner Bay deposit. We acquired 56% uh, of the claims from the Quebec government, from SOCAM. Mm -hmm. uh, the other 44% is owned by Pan American Silver. These uh, claims contain a number of established veins that are in place. They're very high-grade copper, uh, but they're relatively thin. They're about a meter thick, uh, but the grades that, were, that have been drilled previously are 12, 13, 14% copper. 
very, very high grade copper. Yeah. And all the drilling has been done has been shallow okay. to date. And so we're going to evaluate what it takes to drill deeper and potentially increase uh, resources. Uh, we're going to have our corner bay mine right beside those structures. And so it'd be quite easy to mine these, uh, put them at the crusher and sorting facility that's going to be at corner bay. And so this could uh, join our hub and spoke strategy. But even more important than that is um, the land that we acquired is the northern extension of the Corner Bay property. Uh, we have the right rock ensemble. Uh, this is a type of anorthosite uh, that has had some alteration. And uh, we also plan on doing exploration, testing the northern extension of Corner Bay. And, and the most important thing or the most interesting thing of this property is that the, the veins on the uh, land we're acquiring are angled uh, 45 degrees compared to the main Corner Bay deposit. And the intersection of that structure with our deposit actually occurs on the land that we acquired. And that's something uh, quite exciting uh, in mineral exploration when you're able to acquire land that has the potential for the intersection of structures because all of our deposits in the Shubugumu camp are structurally controlled. Yeah. And typically is if you've given the fluids the space within these structures, uh, you can get very interesting ore deposits. So we're really looking forward to working uh, with this new deposit. Yeah, I can imagine that exciting time to doing more exploration work there. Uh, do you have any other drilling plan that you're going to be uh, looking at expanding or exploring around any of your other targets, or is Corner Bay going to be the focus now? Corner Bay will be the focus. However, uh, we we will be doing uh, some downhill geophysics work at the... Um, at the Cedar Bay Southwest structure. Uh, th there is a very promising, again, another structure promising, which is parallel to the Cedar Bay mine. It's about two, 300 meters away from it. And uh, we have drilled a couple of holes this year, some promising results. However, we only tested two holes on about a kilometer of strike. Mm -hmm. And there's a really good potential for there to be a very high grade copper gold structure in Cedar Bay uh, that we still have yet to discover. So that's another very interesting exploration opportunity we have. And finally, uh, we have the Gwilym deposit, uh, which is yeah. a principally a gold deposit located 14 kilometers north of the mill. Uh, we're currently doing compilation of historical work and looking at how we can model uh, the Gwilym deposit to determine what drilling needs to be done in order to potentially come up with a resource at Gwilym. And that okay. resource uh, could be pretty significant uh, scale for Dory Copper. Great, thank you. I mean, it sounds like it's gonna be a busy year, lots of uh, lots of work planned. Uh, I mean, so far this year, we've seen copper and gold uh, testing all time highs, uh, you know, sentiment starting to shift, even in the junior space. Uh, you know, what, what are your kind of thoughts around the current fundamentals supporting you know, this rally and uh, why is it an interesting time to be paying attention to Dory Copper? So uh, on the copper side, uh, it, it has been a bit surprising for the people in the industry to see uh, copper's rapid rise to well over $4 a pound. And, uh, but it, however, it, it does make a lot of sense because we've been predicting a significant shortage of copper starting in 2025, mm -hmm. uh, resulting in a deficit of approximately 5 million tons, which is about 20% of the market in 2030. Now, it seems that that deficit is occurring earlier than people planned. And the reason for that is a number of mines in the world uh, have had um, different issues that have forced them to shut down, and that's taken copper off the market. Okay. Uh, there is a fundamental issue with the largest copper mines in the world in that the majority of them are quite old and they're not keeping their production up, uh, and that continues to play in. Yeah. And, and a third factor is it's very difficult or almost impossible for certain projects to get their permits. And so they're stalled indefinitely. And the market is realizing all of these things as the same time we are seeing electrification occur uh, in our transportation system. Uh, 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 you've probably heard the, the, uh, the, the figures on this, but your typical uh, car contains about three to four times more copper in an electric vehicle than a regular ICE vehicle. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the drivers, but there's other drivers which are occurring. 
Renewable energy uses a lot more copper than traditional energy. Any house being built now has two or three times the number of uh, plugs in the house as they had previously. So everything is more copper intensive. And then the latest thing uh, which is being talked about is AI. Uh, AI requires enormous amounts of computing power and servers, and that is a very copper intensive uh, uh, activity. Yeah. And so the use of AI is is resulting in the construction of a lot more servers, which means more copper wiring. And so we're seeing the world becoming more copper intensive. And the industry is having a hard time keeping up in terms of supplying the copper. So Dory Copper is very well situated in that situation because we have a very uh, a very low capital intensity project. We're in an extremely favorable jurisdiction, which is Quebec. Uh, the local communities around the project are supportive of the project, and we have a project with an infrastructure advantage. So the time to build our project would be about a year yeah. once we have it financed. There's no major equipment to buy, and uh, the infrastructure is in place. So there's we don't have a two or three year earthworks program mm -hmm. to build. So the capital risk on our project is also very low. So I think we have a, really a lot of things in our favor. Well, sounds like uh, you're very well positioned for the year ahead. And congratulations again on the recent acquisition of those claims. Uh, excited to hear more updates from Dory throughout the year. Ernest, thank you so much for joining us today. Very welcome, James. And I'd like to thank everyone who was listening. And uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me personally. Mm -hmm.